<laughs> so, right. I came across your guitars first, probably, probably two years ago. Uh, maybe, maybe a bit more. And one of them arrived in my workshop for repair. Um, and it was, I was pretty impressed with that. Um, so how did you, how, how long have you been making guitars? Um, probably about three years seriously now. Uh, mucked around for probably 20 years or so since I started playing guitar, but didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, we all start like that. I was, I, yeah, I used to be the guy in the guitar shop who thought he knew his thing. Um, but really only three years seriously. Yeah. Yep. And, 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 and your designs, are they, I mean, what do you, what do you base your designs on? Um, basically just guitars I would love to have seen, but maybe couldn't, um, afford or weren't uh, attainable in New Zealand. Um, heavily um, influenced by Kiesel's work. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that in some of your, yeah. I've, I've been through the website now to look back at the, at some of those. Why why Kiesel? I just find their um, designs and colour schemes really visually appealing. Um, they were always the ones I kept going back to um, on the guitar manufacturers or builders that I follow. So would that be a, a look thing, an ergonomic thing, a sound? Um, I feel like it is ergonomics and looks all rolled into one, really. It's it's functional art, really. Yeah, very true. And yeah, and that, that balance and the light, the lightweight and all that kind of stuff with those, and with yours, obviously, in particular. Mm. So how did you start off? Um, so I actually had a couple of guitars custom built for me by Kerry Truscott um, at Chaos Guitars. Um, second one round was a really sort of specced custom that I was quite involved in. And just during the process, um, he showed me how he was doing things. And I sort of thought, well, this is pretty interesting and asked him if he'd consider teaching me properly. And um, he sort of agreed eventually and um, milked him for everything he knew pretty much. <laughs> you must have started off with some kind of woodworking skills or hand skills. Um, no. <laughs> um, basically been a full-time tattoo artist for about 17 years and there, there's definitely hand skill involved in that. Um, but my woodworking prior to guitars is diabolical. Because <laughs> one thing, what that that guitar that I saw that you made, obviously being being a in the train myself, you know the bits to look for that, that are the hard bits, the hard little corners, you know, where the you know, the back of the headstock where it meets the, the the neck, and with yours in particular, what impressed me was one little curve on the butt end of it. And just how nicely that curve was was finished, without any little sort of flat spots going around the curve. I mean, that's so you clearly a lot of a lot of skill, a lot of attention to detail there. Yeah, I think it comes with the day job, really. Yeah. So, so choice of materials. What what do you do? You, do you have any sort of philosophy on on how you choose your materials or how you design your your instruments? Oh, my preference is to work with as much native timber as possible um, and obviously some some nice imported stuff with figure in it and that and um, always like to use exotic fretboards from wherever um, but generally yeah as, as much native wood as possible and you know things like tawa or matai they have really linear grain um, you can follow one grain line all the way up for over over a meter, meter and a half. Um, same with the yeah. Matai and Tara are just they're really great woods, um, and I think we need to get more guitars out there with them. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And 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 yeah, talking about that that straight grain and and in your mind, does that translate into into sound sustain what? Um, stability, probably first and I, I believe yeah it would it would be a, a very direct transfer of vibration 
Well, so, so what do you what do you think about the density of woods and 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 the sound they make? I, I definitely feel there is an influence. Um, it's obviously more of an acoustic influence in general, but then that again reflects in the resonance of the guitar through the pickups. So generally, the lighter and less dense woods they they seem to vibrate a lot a lot more. Like for example, Kahikatea, it's it's not an overly dense wood, it's New Zealand white pine and it it does vibrate a lot, but it makes a nice sounding guitar too. One of my favourites actually, Kahikatea. I've got some I've got some in the airing cupboard and it's been there for a long time, wait just waiting for a project. <laughs> I mean, and I haven't I haven't made anything with it, but it just you when you handle a piece of wood you can you can you can feel the sound in it. Yes, it's like your fingerprint makes a makes a makes a sound, and that yeah, Kahikati does does it for me. It's it's very resonant. Yeah, yeah. So, if I come to you wanting a guitar, how how, how do we go about that? What what what's the process? Um, basically, just contact through the Archetype Facebook page, and um, I will send you an email with your build spec form um, or as I like to call it, the wish list. And um, if it's all attainable when it comes back to me, then I'll spend a good few hours resourcing um, all the materials and working out exchange rates and um, send a, an itemized quote back. And, and how long does that take? I mean, how long, if I say, you know, I want X guitar, how long are most bills? Um, Generally, I like to put about an eight month build time on, um, especially since it's not something I do full time. And if life throws any curveballs, gives me a little bit of time to get my stuff sorted and um, get you your guitar on time. Yeah, um, currently, pretty much anything that people are contacting me and commissioning is almost completely custom, almost every aspect. There are certain things I still haven't done. Um, like predominantly build bolt on necks at the moment, but um, venturing into neck through territory at the moment with the, the first go and probably uh, delve into set necks in the future as well. But you know, one thing at a time. Okay. So the through neck, what, 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 what would you say the advantage of a through neck is? Or the difference between a through neck? Um, definitely find them a little bit more difficult to build, but um, the, the access and the feel, I mean, you, you can't really beat that high fret access and the smooth transition from the, the neck to the body. They they do feel amazing. Okay. So what have you, what have you, what have you got on the go at the moment? Um, I've got about seven, seven different builds on the go at the moment. Um, Currently, almost finishing up my first floating trim build. Um, a few seven strings, a couple of headless. Um, sort of just sort of delving into bass guitars a little bit more at the moment too. So, sort of planning and designing stuff in that avenue at the moment as well. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of guitars to have on the go at any one time. <laughs> Oh, it, it keeps life interesting. Yeah, I bet it does. Gosh. And and, <laughs> and it's easy enough keeping track. I mean, these are all different builds, so these are all unique guitars. Uh, they are all very different. And, um, you know, at any given time amongst that seven, there is probably two or three that I'm, I'm just building out of interest and, and may or may not sell on once they're complete, just to try things out, try different woods out. Um, and I can work on them any time. Um, commissions generally, you know, take priority. So I spend most of my time on them and uh, in between. Or if, you know, I need a break from a commission, I'll jump onto something I'm mucking around with. And the last time the last time we spoke, you were talking about a CNC router. Yeah. So what's, tell me, tell me more. What do, what's, your, what's your plan with that? Um, well, up to this point, everything's been done by hand, and um, that definitely contributes to the length of the build time. So, um, you know, for the sake of accuracy and, and saving some time, tr slowly translating everything over there and learning how to use the software, 
and um, you know design things and work out how fast to run certain tools and you know all of those things. It's all new. And, and you, sorry. Oh, it's just it's so accurate. It's unbelievable. It's you just couldn't even hope to replicate that by hand. So it saves the time for the you know the the more important things like fret leveling and and set up and and the finish. Um, you know, put a lot of time into those already. Finish. What's what do you offer with finishes? Um, generally, it's all one k lacquer. Um, but I mean, for the harder woods, I do offer things like a true oil finish, which is hand rubbed, and it can be satin or gloss, depending on the process used. Mm -hmm. um, right. Sorry, I'm just going to turn you down a bit. Because um, as soon as you go high, high gloss, I mean, that suddenly, suddenly that the, the time that takes, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah. I, I do envy the guys that can get a, a mirror finish off the gun. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I don't know if anyone in our trade, I don't know if anyone actually does that. You know, the, the, the automotive trade, yeah, but if you actually look at a car and, you know, look at a supposedly flat finish on a car, it's nowhere near as good as, 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 what, as what you expect on a guitar. Yeah. True. I mean, you'll be cutting back to what, two thousand or something, will you, before you buff? Yeah. Um. Generally, a uh, uh, wet sand with two thousand once the paint's cured, and then a uh, series of polishes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Because that that's another thing I was impressed with with that with that that guitar was 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 the finish on it. Yeah. yeah. Polished by hand, just to basically not burn through surfaces <laughs> or corners yeah there were some awkward little like that curve in the butt end that i mentioned awkward little corners like that and of course around where the neck joins the body it's yeah you can easily burn bits out there yeah yeah that was uh, yeah and also i think i always find psychologically it's a really hard thing to do is the finish um because you've made your guitar You've got it. You just want you want to you, you want to you want it done. Did you find that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and then you you finish the finish and it's immaculate. And then you have to assemble it with sharp things like screwdrivers and soldering irons. And um, it's actually quite nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not for bed, but yeah. <laughs> so your your hardware choices. What do you what do you base that on? Um, generally, um, with commission work, it's it's whatever the the client requests. Um, I do use a lot of hip shop hardware. Um, it's an American company. Is I don't know if it's manufactured there, but they're based in the USA. Um, and there's a Korean manufacturer that I like to use. If um, I wouldn't say budget's an issue, but I mean it's it's really high quality gear, and it's really not overly expensive. So I like to use that if they don't really have a preference. And um, everyone's been really impressed so far. Right, right. With the hardware, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and 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 with your guitars, you've definitely got a growing reputation. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely, it's and that's which is great. I mean, it's it's really good to see, you know. I mean, relatively new builders um, who are who are making such high quality guitars. That's just, you know that that's 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 fantastic. You know, it's this is little New Zealand, and it's great. And yeah, New Zealand hardwoods, or sorry, New Zealand more timber. Sorry, um, yeah, good to see more of that. Hey, do you have a do you have a, a unique headstock design? Um. Generally, again, it's it's what people want, but I definitely have a soft spot for a, a reverse inline. Um, but recently, been sort of delving into like four on the treble side, two on the bass side with a six string, or um, five on the treble side and two on the bass with a seven. A um, little bit different again, but still has that sort of 
reverse look to it. Fun. <laughs> yeah. so, so do you uh, do you have any any sort of guitar maker heroes like you know, Leo Fender or? Um, well, I mean, I'd I'd have to say a mandatory uh, Kerry <laughs> from Chaos. Um, he's he's done some really cool stuff, man. And um, obviously the the Kiesel guys. Um, there, there's actually a lot. Uh, like follow the red layer. I think he's from Sweden. Um, yeah, I can't think of any more off the top of my head, but. My news feed on Facebook is just full of various builders and yeah. Um, oh, you know, the obvious Skurvison, my own, they're all of really impressive high end guitars and it's, it's good inspiration and something to somewhat aspire to. Yeah, yeah. I know, but, but yeah, it's good to take, bring things in from everywhere and then go, go in your own direction. Yeah. Well, I definitely take cues from all of them. Yeah, yeah, everything's worth paying attention to, isn't it? And 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 looking at. And I, I think I, know, I was a guitar repairer for twenty five years, and and Leo Fender, I, I I I still am in awe of, and and really not not necessarily from a player's point of view, but from the nuts and bolts point of view. You know, little things that you keep you can find like. If you if you the thirty four inch scale bass, you put a capo on fifth fret, what you're left with is twenty five and a half inches. Nice. So, of course, you can see what he's done. He's got his jigs and he's just extended that. Brilliant. Yeah, well, he pretty much reinvented the guitar, didn't he? The electric guitar. Well, yeah, yeah, and and but all those little unique things that. It was. It wasn't. An, a, a, I think of Gibson's as a as a long evolution, coming to a reasonably logical conclusion. Whereas this, this, you know, Fender just sort of popped out from nowhere and and did everything differently. Yeah, yeah. It would set the standard for a lot of manufacturers now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so where do you see where do you see archetype guitars going? Um, I'd definitely like to put more time into the guitar side of things and um, slowly taking steps towards that. So um, just uh, continue growing, maybe not too fast <laughs> right now, um, and just keep getting them in the hands of, um, you know, musicians. They don't, don't have to be touring or gigging musicians, but, I mean, the more the better. Yeah. So what... So, uh who who is your typical customer? I mean, is there is there a typical customer? Um, not particularly. Um, the age range is, you know, there's not really a specific age range. Um, I mean, so far, it has all been males. <laughs> um, but you know, inquiries from from women along the way and. But definitely, yeah. I, it seems to appeal to sort of the metal community a bit. Maybe it's sort of the guitars are a little bit edgier and more maybe metal looking, but um, they're definitely capable of any sounds. <laughs> mm. So is that is that your thing, you know, the, 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 the metal world? Uh, it's, it's definitely, if you to look at my playlist, predominantly... Uh, middle. <laughs> so if I wanted a jazz master in sea foam green, not a jazz master, but uh, uh, that kind of vibe of of, yeah. of 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 guitar. Obviously, if I wanted a jazz master, I'd buy a jazz master. But but mm. it, it, I wouldn't go to you for that. I'd go to you for something that I wanted for a dream guitar, really. I suppose. Yeah. So um, so you would be you're quite happy doing that. Yes, not a direct copy, no. um, but I mean, if if well, like for example, the guitar you you had uh, briefly, that's sort of somewhere in between Italian and Les Paul. Um, it's the probably the first and only guitar I've made with the twenty four point seven five scale length. Um, you know, it, it's not something what I'd call I'd typically make, but 
again, if the commission calls for it and they're sort of willing to let me do my thing with the style of it a bit, then I'm pretty happy to do most stuff mm. currently. <laughs> or, you know, I do want to move on to a, you know, move on to maybe a set, set few shapes and variations of scale and string format and um, just maybe do a little less custom work in the future, but keep keep it going. Why, why would that be? Uh, it, it's a lot of back and forth when it, it's custom stuff. Um, well, I can definitely see the merit in having a form say like the likes of keys will have where you do have a lot of options but they are set options um it, it does save a lot of the the time that you spend asking questions and getting answers and then being asked questions and giving answers um definitely something that takes up quite a lot of time yeah yeah definitely you know I'm, 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 and and all that time where you, where you're looking up the price of something as well and looking at the availability yeah uh, availability actually is, is a, has been a big issue in 2020 i find yeah yeah just getting bits here yeah it's it's i've still been able to resource things but definitely the the wait times there's just no they can't give you an indication of how long it's going to take and it's it's usually months which then pushes a build out further. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose people understand this. I mean, that's completely out of your hands, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you, so, so you, you, you see you're, you're sort of aiming in some ways towards uh, like a small range of, of instruments. You yeah. Think? Yeah. Well, I've, I've got a few shapes already sort of down and um, most of them have been put into into action and work quite well. Um, so if, if someone asks for a super strat, then I generally will just make my super strat shape. Um, and then recently the the jazz master that I did, um, or that style again revised to be an archetype. Um, that went down really well. Everyone loves it. That's definitely a shape that's available. Um, yeah. Okay. Now then, what about relicking? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not a fan personally, um, but I, I'd have a go <laughs> if someone wanted okay. it. Yeah. Do, do you do all the 2000, all the buffing, and then you you go off and age yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that would, would feel kind of wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I quite like relicking, you see. But well, then you could clear back over all of it and then it would be perfect again, but relict. <laughs> right, right, right. See, I don't I, know. From, uh, from a player point of view, I, I, I think, I find, especially expensive guitars, if they're relict, I'm not afraid of them. Yep, okay. Just get on and play them. Yep. Whereas if they're just pristine and, the, and, and all that, then, then I can be a bit afraid of them. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. So, um, so have you made guitars for anyone? Any names you can name? Any names? Oh, um, yeah, uh, I've got both the guys from these four walls. They were based in Auckland for quite a long time. Um, Stephen Gibb and Gray Vickers. Um, they're over in Aussie doing their thing. And, um, Ooh, I think it was just finished it during the, the lockdown, actually, the Jazz Master 7 string for Nick Martin. Um, he drums for Seeds of Conflict and Devil Skin, so. Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and um, how could I forget, Ben Atkinson, um, blindfolded and led to the woods in Christchurch. Um, he actually has two of my builds. Wow. Brilliant. Both seven string, um, baritone, twenty-seven inch scale. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so scale length. What I mean, tell me all about differences in scale length. Um. Oh, generally anything sort of seven string and above, I like to keep at a twenty-seven inch scale, um, or longer if uh, the person wants it. But um, 
just for that good string tension on the lowest tuned ones and you know you can start delving into a low G or a low F or even E you know sort of with a 27 inch scale and still have good tension and intonation it's, it's um it is very beneficial yeah yeah it's tricky although that sound of the low string you know when you strike it it bends sharp yes you that, and then it settles in because it's deflecting so much it's bending itself sharp that's almost become a part of the sound of metal isn't it yeah but yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, a longer scale is, is, yeah, definitely helps that a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you don't want to go in too, too sharp, do you? <laughs> no, no, no. Because, and then, and then, yeah, with fretting, it's, yeah, it gets really messy. Um, yeah, if you let any note ring, it doesn't happen that much. But yeah, it does, yeah, it, it does go out a lot. Yeah. And, and you're saying basses? Yeah. Yep. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I find I find bass players uh, on the whole don't mess with their gear as much as guitar players. Um, I don't know why. Maybe they're just more satisfied individuals. Um, <laughs> you know, they they kind of know they're in control, um, and they don't yeah. tend to get, get guitar acquisition syndrome like 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 the rest of us. Uh, cool. So yeah, I've, I've made one so far. It's it's on the archetype page if anyone wants to see it, but it's it's floating around in the background here. It's a it's one. Oh, it's multi scale. Yep, yep. Extended scale for um, low tunings. Let's, let's let's have a look. Yeah. I've stolen the uh, other volume control out of this one, though. It's funny. I can see. I can see in the in the kind of keys in the in the butt end, but that top horn, it looks like it definitely tipping its hat to Rickenbacker. Yep, yep. You've got that. That's the one. I've always liked that shape. And that that to me looks like it balances really well on a strap. Yeah. So yeah. Can you hold it up and, and just hold it still for a it's, it's, it's hard seeing it when it's. You can see it all right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so what's that, the, the next maple? Uh, that's a tower fretboard. Um, and the next. It's a tower strip up the middle. And then. Um, Remu and uh, just some really thin strips of totra on the outside, but it's um it's river totra, so it's dark. I really like totra, although it's a bit hard to glue in there with all the the uh, sort of waxiness of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that stuff because it's been submerged. It's a lot like you know swamp ash, where it's it's not as oily once it's been submerged and dries out again so it glues up better yeah good good I, I actually really like the sound of totra i think it's got a lovely um chimey sound a, a, a little a little bit like kahikatea actually yeah they're a similar density yeah 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 oh cool multi-scale brilliant and there's that it's funny there's there's, there's a lot of multi-scales around these days um and I, I i once made a multi-scale acoustic and oh nice yeah, I sort of look back at trying to go as far back as I could, looking at the for the origins of of, of multi scale, and the earliest reference I found to multi scale instruments was from fourteen something fourteen. Oh wow! And and the thinking then being, if you're using sheep intestines as strings, obviously sheep are not going to oblige you by producing intestines in different gauges. <laughs> so so for each different string tension. There's a different scale length. Yeah. So yeah, so it made complete sense then, and of course it's it's coming back now as a as a thing. Well, that's that's interesting. Um, I I had definitely seen it on mandolins from you know eighteen hundred somewhere in the eighteen hundreds. Um, didn't realise it went that far back. Yeah, yeah. Hard to cut the fingerboards though. The, the all the slots. 
Yeah, you can't <laughs> use a, um, you can't use a miter box for that. <laughs> no, so all that yeah, I suppose it's all by hand and all that and all the fret things. It was, and, was definitely by hand, um, but there's a all these wonderful technological things now where you can um, tell a website what scale lengths you want and string spacing and print a template at one to one and um, just glue it on the fretboard and slot to the lines and really I didn't know you could just print it out one to one that is really cool it definitely took a lot of work out of the measuring um, especially for multi-scale with your vernier and your, your vernier is only so long and then so you've got to go oh, I've got to work out that See, mm. when I when I started in the mid 90s what for, for an unusual scale length it was you divide the scale length by 17.817 okay which is the number is indelibly marked in my mind <laughs> um and then and then with what you're left with you divide that by 17.817 etc 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 and then you to you, you calculate your own placings okay so, is that the so that's the formula to get the fret spacing yeah it's related to the 12th root of two yep anyway. that comes up in this website that makes the the fretboard templates <laughs> yeah i mean really you can muck about with all doing all that but yeah if you've got a you like the stew mac fret calculator if you can put that that in and it says this is the answer. Uh, I, and I see that as the same thing as I've seen some people advertising their guitars are completely made by hand and they don't use a CNC. And you sort of think, well, why? Why, why is that better? Well, CNCs aren't cheap, mostly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and yeah. if you're a hob hobbyist, like, I mean, that's that's how I started hobbyist with a very small selection of, of hand tools and um, just, I mean, doing builds and, and using the money from the builds to buy better tools and so on and so forth and, you know, saving at the same time. And for me, it's it's always been a, a, a life dream to make guitars. So, you know, a, a CNC was probably the next, you know, natural step. And the evolution of the, the building process for me. Mm, definitely. Uh, and, my and cat then, brought a bird in. <laughs> oh no. I'm just going to shut the door and worry about that later. All right, I'll leave them to it. <laughs> uh, is, is, is the bird the bird's dead then? No. <laughs> Oh well, we'll be soon. Yeah, uh, I, we can pause and I can go chase it out if you want. <laughs> uh, no, it's up to you. Entirely up to you. Do you want to, do you want to sort it out? Um, yeah, I might do actually. Go, yeah. go sort it out. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> what sort of bird was it? Oh, just a sparrow. I must have brought it in through the cat door. <laughs> oh, I suppose there are plenty, plenty more sparrows, aren't there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, um, I mean, obviously, this is this the you. This is a, a dream job, isn't it? This is, you know, I suppose we all we all grow up going, oh, I'd love to make guitars for a living. And it's kind of, you know, and it's really cool to to achieve that. What would you, how would you, what advice would you give to somebody starting out? Who, um, and don't rush. You know, it's it's when you start getting ahead of yourself that, that things start going wrong. <laughs> um, and safety gear, you know, like proper ventilation, um, you know, really, if you're going to be working with wood, some woods 
highly toxic like wingy you know um you want to use the appropriate uh gear um because a sick, sick luthier isn't going to be building many guitars <laughs> yeah have you got 10 still got 10 <laughs> oh <laughs> it's cut been a couple of razor blade incidents um as you can probably relate to slipping off whatever you're razor blading and um catching a body part yeah raptors are the ones yeah oh man and you know the route is one of those tools that especially if you're building by hand you're going to be using it every single day um and yeah <laughs> small bites <laughs> it's yeah. probably the, the biggest thing is just small bites <laughs> yeah yeah t and uh, yeah take your time like like you said you just you just take it easy yep because the second you get complacent the old drill press will rip whatever you're working on out of your hands or the router will fly across it and you're starting again and it's always when that happens afterwards you go just before that happened, I was thinking, oh, this looks a bit, this is a bit dodgy. <laughs> yep, every time. Learning learning to recognise that that little, little message in your head and yep. go, oh, therefore, I'll stop. Yes. And I'll just use some clamps or what have you, but yeah. Yeah, no, good advice. <laughs> yeah, he's to say, he's to give advice, isn't it? It's actually putting it in practice, though. Yeah. And also, you know, another really good uh, piece of advice that, that Kerry gave me was um, your state of mind when working, especially with sharp and power tools. If you're not right, you know, you, you, you need to give it a miss because something goes wrong every time. Yeah. you got to be clear headed. <laughs> and uh, my, my thinking is that's what jigs are for. Yeah. With, if, with really good jigs you're still good on a bad day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. Well, um, yeah, I suppose we'll finish off then. I can't think of anything. Do you, have you got anything else you would like to say? I'll probably think of something the second we turn the computer off. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, me too. Well, I mean, we we can always revisit if you want to, um, but yeah, I don't know, not not really. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just keep no, no, stop. Keep, keep playing. <laughs> yeah, gosh, yeah, keep playing. Yeah, yeah, keep getting gas. Yeah, yep. Well, Aiden, thank you, thank you very much. Cool, really, um, yeah, really, re really informative. Thank and you. Hopefully, hopefully, all our technology has worked on this, and and we'll have a video out of it. But yeah, yeah, do something. Yeah. Who are you going to ask next? I don't know. I've got, I've got, to, I've got to make sure this this worked properly. But um, I hmm. was thinking of um, maybe Waylon McPherson. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you know Waylon. Um, is that McPherson's pedals? Yeah. 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 What um, are they? Are they? They're not called McPhersons, though, are they? There. Where he is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I definitely see him pop up quite a lot on the group, and he seems to make some cool stuff. So. Yeah. No, he does. He make he makes he makes really cool stuff. Well, I've known Waylon for quite a long time. Um, yeah. So so I think I'll have a sort of have a have a chat with him, or at least ask him if he's up for it. Um, 